What is a telemedicine needs assessment and why is it important? A needs assessment is the process of obtaining and analyzing information to determine the current status and service needs of a specific population. A needs assessment can be a powerful tool used to identify unmet service needs and develop strategies to address them. Many programs fail or experience development setbacks because this important first step was overlooked. The needs assessment, in addition to its obvious purpose, which is to gather information, really is a dialogue process and enables you to bring the, the corners of your system together in a shared conversation about how we can improve patient access to services, how doctors can and will benefit. Conducting a needs assessment provides many benefits, including a clear understanding of unmet need, sound planning which contributes to effective programming, clarification of objectives and establishment of shared expectations among stakeholders, improved coordination of services and allocation of resources, support for evaluation of program effectiveness. Step 1. Identifying your assessment's objectives and scope. Consider what you want to achieve with your needs analysis and the scope of your analysis. Why are we conducting needs analysis or what problems are we trying to solve? Identify patient and other populations whose needs will be assessed and which types of needs will be considered. We recommend that you create a charter that documents your scope and objectives for the needs analysis that really needs to come out of a clinical need from the remote site. You might have the expertise at your institution, um, but if there's not a clinical need at the remote site, then it's not going to come working. One of our most successful programs, which has been um, in the intensive care unit at a, a community hospital, has been just that. They were admitting children. They knew that they didn't have the expertise to take care of these children, and they actually approached us to a solution to this problem, not even thinking telemedicine, and we were able to use the technology to um, help provide the expertise that they were needing. Step two, identifying your assessment approach. Identify the information that would assist in determining program needs. Based on the possible needs and opportunities identified in the charter, determine the best approach for collecting data and information to assess and validate the need. Look internally or externally for quantitative data about your identified need. Also, consider other methods such as focus groups, interviews, and asset mapping to identify gaps in service. I think a needs assessment is critical in starting a telemedicine program. One of the things that we started with was a series of interviews and we really felt that was key in finding out what the needs were for our particular healthcare system in South Lake Tahoe. The other thing is really getting a quantitative measurement as well, and this was much harder to achieve. We wanted to find out what the referral patterns were. What we did find, though, is that the qualitative piece of it was pretty easy, that by interviewing people, we really had two benefits. We found out what their real needs were, what they would actually use through a telemedicine program, but also, as we interviewed them, they felt like they were part of the process from the beginning. Step three. Identifying your current and desired state. Your current state evaluation generally focuses on the clinical services your organization currently provides, how the provided services are delivered, the numbers and types of providers, and other characteristics of support services. The desired state evaluation will identify the supplemental services, delivery capability, providers, and other support necessary. I think there needs to be several things that uh, a new um, institution or hospital would need to look at before they wanted to utilize this technology. One is, of course, your uh, IT or information technology infrastructure. Do you have the resources in order to um, effectively implement this kind of technology in your hospital system? On top of that, you need to look at what is your culture that is currently going on in your hospital. How will your clinicians adopt this change in the way that healthcare is delivered? But without doing the needs assessment, we didn't realize some of the culture that was within the ICUs that could impact the um, ability for physicians and nurses to adapt to a, a change in the way that healthcare is delivered. Step four, identifying the gap. Every needs analysis should include an evaluation of the difference between what you currently do and what you envision doing. What are you trying to achieve? 
is there a gap that you cannot fill with the current way that you're doing things within your hospital? What are our outcomes right now? Do we have the resources that we need? There's evidence that shows that you could probably save in the United States alone 56,000 lives by putting the most qualified physician taking care of intensive care patients. And it makes sense. And we looked at different models and approaches and one of our um, CEOs, former, vice, uh, former president, was able to see a tele-ICU in action. And he felt that this would be a way to leverage that resource. Step five, identifying barriers. Once your gap analysis has helped you identify the services and technology needed, the next step is to identify potential barriers to implementing your telemedicine program. Examples of typical barriers include lack of funding, lack of personnel, lack of particular skill sets, lack of knowledge of the implementation process, inadequate IT support. Step six, assigning priorities. Now that you've identified the gap in services, you can begin to prioritize the different needs. Priority ranking may be based on the numbers of needed services, the organization's ability or mission to serve in those areas, or other factors. It should also include what services are appropriate and successful when using telemedicine. Priority ranking provides important information for the executive, clinical, and other stakeholders who will review your needs assessment. Step seven, summarizing and presenting the results. The outcome of each step of your needs assessment should be documented in some format. This report pulls together all of the information obtained during the needs assessment. The depth and formality of the report depends upon the purpose, scope, and approach established in the early steps of the needs assessment. Many organizations combine the identification of needs with the proposed program model and the resulting business case. These three activities are interrelated and many organizations complete all three simultaneously. Combining the three can be helpful in presenting a complete picture and obtaining support and approval to move ahead.